Hello, welcome to Makriza Made Me Cook. My name is Prince Sivalo Mashang. So today we are here to meet up with Ureki. Uzbiza fresh, fresh in So we are going to spend some time with him and also get to learn the motivation behind his business. And also see how he buys his bananas and also his motivation. And also talk about his favorite traditional dish. We are also going to add a step count to see on average how many kilometers he travels per day. Welcome to the show. Hey, Ricky, what's up, bro? Hey, Grand Buff, welcome, hey. man. Hi, Ishaan. Welcome to the show, man. Welcome yeah, to the show. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thanks, uh, it's So tell us, bro, who's, who's Rick? Tell us more about yourself. Hey, I know it's a, it's a broad question, but once I'm, we, we, we hey. summarize right now. Yeah, I mean, I, I come from uh, Kilani. Yeah, uh, I, 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 was, I was, yeah, I grew up in Kilani. I grew up in Kilani. I spent some time also in Joburg. Yeah, so, but home is, is Bulawayo, Mkumakona. Okay. Kuluma so na, you know, yeah. yeah. And I'm 23. Oh. Yeah, I'm 23. And I love, um, I love energy. I like, I love uh, surrounding myself with people with energy. You know, sport. Be it sport. If we're doing something productive or progressive, be it sport. If it's gonna uh, help us mentally, you know, physically. Yeah, okay. things like that. I go to church. You know, and yeah, I think. It, well, in sport, I like cycling. Is yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I cycle a lot with the boys. You know, once uh, usually on Sundays. Yeah, and okay. then if it's not that, I'm selling. Okay. You know, so yeah, that's like a summary for of, ex- of yourself. When I get. Oh yeah, you, you spoke about energy, and I can see your your, your brand is called that energy. Right. Like you're right. walking through the streets, and it's like yeah. difficult not to notice. That is Ricky. Yeah, yeah. it's Ricky, and yeah. I can see you are here 8th Avenue and Joshua Nkomo. Right. Joshua Nkomo. Right. Why did you choose this street? Because this is the busiest uh, street in the city, yeah. Main Street. It and is. you know, Main Street yeah. all all over the city, in yeah. all the cities all over the world. Yeah. It's like the heart of the city. Yeah. yeah. Any specific reason for for yeah. this? I actually, spot. I actually didn't know which I actually didn't see it like that. Which is the heart of the city. It's the mo- I knew it was the main street. But when I started, I was selling. Um, I was actually selling like, just a little bit further by the tree. And there was a guy called Eno. He was selling that side. He's no longer selling now. And what he Nankala. So I didn't know which spot to really park if uh, uh, to avoid municipals. You know. But I don't know. Pagalapa. They are not a problem. But I know Pagalapa. They are not a problem. So ever since that time, that's when I, I, I decided to sell this side. And ever since that time, corner, the street is, it, it is busy and municipals, they, 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 they loot. <laughs> yeah, that's why I realized a lot of vendors don't actually sell here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, for I have a food, you know, I get lucky sometimes, I have a bona mame kamuga, and I, I run. Okay. You know, and evade them. Yeah, but uh, I, I like it because it's, it's a, it's it's a busy street. It's alive, and it's 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 lucrative. I can say it's lucrative because I sell well here. Yeah, okay. there are, there are some spots where I sell, but like Mangila, I take business. Yeah, yeah. Push. and another thing is that when I posted about it on my social platforms, people got to know me here. Okay, you know, I got my first like uh, digital customers here. <laughs> yeah, well, okay. Banglanda, hey Ricky, this is you. You do bananas here, Banglanda. La. This is where I directed them. Okay. Josh and Eighth Avenue. Fresh and more. Fresh and more. <laughs> I want. Okay, let you speak about the social media. How is yeah. it enhanced, especially Twitter? See, the, like, how is it enhanced your brand? Yeah. Yeah, fresh and more. So, uh, in social media, uh, I I got to uh, meet a lot of people. Like nine nine kunala. Okay. Fourteen years okay. when I advertise my business. Eba fetching taisela la nungtola la. Esto mesgan komo ilazen nungtola kona. I figure again, that's when I got most of my customers. So since then, I think that was like a mark, a landmark, you would know. As in Aban Pagwazelela, so this is where you should like. It's like a pivot. Yeah, settle. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. If you want to find out about Ricky's bana- bananas, fresh and Ngola, um, Tula, who ate. Wait, and, ate yeah, Lord, yeah, Josh. yeah, most likely. Okay. Yeah, oh, so, likely. yeah, that's how social media is. It's, it's like 
the social media has is characterized, my friend. Yeah, laws on Tola Ko Nang Tesi Panani Linda and Yen Nays Dampa, you know, all those things. Yeah, so to a great extent, really, social media is is an enhanced. Yeah, okay. I get off in the morning and and then I ride to town to 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 check the prices in, in, in different places where they they um, they supply bananas. Once I find a place where they, they, they supply uh, good bananas, you touching all I first buy plastics carrier bags and you you touching all cotini gumbe e gumkambo gumba. And then I head over to the place where I, 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 I prefer to buy ama banana. And then, yeah, that's literally how I start my day off. Right, ama banana sugar na. There are small bananas. You can find small bananas in one crat and big bananas in one crat. So what you do, I lay my bananas according to grade. You know, I put small bananas on one side and big bananas, bananas on the other side. And then I sell them differently. If the banana is small, I sell it at five, five bond. If it's bigger, maybe seven bond to ten bond, depending on the size. Yeah. And then the worst part is is having your banana um, uh, ruined uh, throughout the day. So I I also have to be uh, careful with how I treat customers, but you know. You know, all of those things. That, that's, that's one big challenge I face uh, with the banana. And then also municipals, I can get looted, you know, and business is over. I'd have to wait for, um, for some time before I, I, I start off again. The chicken, the sausage, the motivation start for pushing a business like the fresh freshing in all I needed a place to start you know I realized would uh, you can you can be successful academically or in any means but if you're not doing anything in life it doesn't make any difference you know so I needed a place to start because I was thinking long term would after 10 years where am I gonna be you know and for every entrepreneur there's a place to start you know you look at them 10 years before, 20 years before they started somewhere. In the community where I stay, we are not doing anything, you know? So I was thinking, hey man, a lot of people are not doing anything with their academic success, you know? So it's, it's gonna be a problem if we're just gonna stay home and not doing anything when we, could, we should be doing, should be trying at least Konoko Kon, you know? So like, I know, I, actually, you know, I was motivated not to be like that. You know, I was inspired not to be like that. So I decided, no, let me, let me get out of my comfort zone and uh, do something that is out of my comfort zone and start selling. Yeah, so that's what motivated me. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk about this thing, what's called APS, uh, Avantuazotin Syndrome, yeah, which is like killing a lot of dreams out here. Like, how do you get over it? Considering the fact that you're selling bananas and most people or most young people would not think of even dare to do that. So how did you get over that syndrome? Yeah, Bozutin syndrome is a very big syndrome. It's problematic in our African society. It's very problematic. But for me, I I had to for I honestly had to force it. You know, because it takes a long time. You actually have to get out there and bear Leo uh, Leo embarrassment. You know, no want because it's it's honestly in your mind. I figured it some time later. Which, no, it's only in your mind. I want to buy a one thing, a banana, and then they move on and think about their own things. You know, people are too busy to, you know, to care about what's happening in your life. They got lives also. So yeah, about the syndrome, it's it's in your head. You know, that's what I learned in in the course of time when I was selling. From I mean, from the time I was selling, it's all in your mind. So 
me acknowledging that to Utlan, Sengondeni, Mang Tengisa, Awantawas of Bona, Bagobona, but like they're not, they're not spending the whole day thinking, ah, Rick is doing this, he's selling bananas. So, where does it mean his life is going? You know, they don't think about what your life is, is about. So I, I, that's how I got over the, the, the Abazotin syndrome. And I found myself actually selling without even thinking, Uti Yeah. Ah, that's inspirational. Uh, so you were here in the Makokoba. Um, and I, I know Makokoba is one of your major markets. So can you just explain to me uh, why you love Makokoba? When, um, when I started selling, I would pass through the rank and go to town. But the first time I, I moved to my Kokoba, I just decided to just uh, move in my Kokoba. I just loved it from that time. Because on that day, I sold well. Hey, I want to buy up in Mali, actually. They've got money. they got enough to you know, support their children. Because there are young people here, I mean young couples, who are supporting their children, but like they can afford to support their children, they can afford to buy a banana, that's what I noticed. So the market is good, we've got young parents as well, so my sales, they usually go well in Makokoba, that's why I, I, I liked passing here. Every time I was in Makokoba, I mean, I was in I was in Makokoba, there's food traffic there, take around there. Sometimes I, I stand on some point and wait for about 30 minutes. See what get So get ten sega now. And mark ten sega. Why are you important? And then if I see what I know, so for them pull me and get back to town. That's when I I get out. But I I I, I love. I just love the the, the vibe in Makokoba. I want Makona. It's it's an alive uh, so, um, community. It's a very alive community. We want to want to You know all those things. It's it's like a it's 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 a it's a community where people are doing like real things. You know, isn't it? Zoguti. I listen to Zoguti. It's 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 we're trying to live a, an artificial lifestyle. You know, trying to impress the gram. You know all those things. Nah, it's not like that. It's, it's a real place, real people, real conversations, real support. You know, that's what I love about Kokoba. Yeah. I saw in the morning you came riding on your bike, and I assume you are a passionate biker. So, uh, when did you start biking, and why is it important for people to have bikes uh, as a form of exercise? I started cycling when I was a kid. I remember asking my father to buy me a bicycle. I think I was four or five years old. I asked him, I really begged him to buy me a bicycle. So from that time, I really liked by, uh, cycling. But there's a time when I stopped, I think I was in school. So I never really got into cycling, you know. And um, when I started working, um, I started working a, a Ponza Spa in Hillside. That's when I started cycling, because I didn't want to pay twice the, the fair fee. So I started uh, cycling to Ponza Spa, and from then on, I, I bought a brand new uh, road bike and started meeting AMA cyclists, the real racers, you know. I started associating with those people and we started going on long um, rides across the city, airport road, or to the airport, Plum Tree Road, you know, all those things. That's when I started liking uh, biking, yeah. So every time I'm, I'm cycling, I'm, I'm going to town, I'm riding, yeah, even to work. I commute on a bike. Yeah, so it actually seems like um, I'm exercising with the way I ride because I move, eh? I cruise, I go. If you know me, <laughs> you know this boy is a problem, you know. So I cruise, yeah. So, but I'll be commuting, you know. Sometimes it's, it's looking at the circumstances, you can't really uh, travel. I mean, you, you can't, sometimes you can't afford the transport. Sometimes you don't have cash, you know. So it's, it's commuting, yeah. Then what impact do you want to have in this world? In this world, yeah. Hey, with impact, I, I, I think what's important is for Abandu, Be, Bazu, Wuti, um, the world is, is large, you know. A lot of people don't, the world is too busy as well. Uh, uh, it's too busy for people to know, I mean, for people to care what you're doing with your life, you know. So, uh, I, I just hope, Fai Paul Labakiwa, I just hope uh, Uti, like as I work, it also inspires some millennials because it, with us millennials, especially in a developing country like Zimbabwe, we like to um, we, we expose ourselves too much to social uh, social media and television. So we, of which social media and television is a Western uh, type of thing, you know. 
we're Western type of content. So it means like our brains are in a Western country, in a Western world, but our bodies are in Zimbabwe. So we don't get to, um, it's, it's like we, we are not doing the things that we should be doing in Zimbabwe. You know, we look down on things that we should be doing in Zimbabwe to, um, to, 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 to flourish this side or to try to get by this side. You know, so it's one of those things that uh, I, I hope, Ute, especially us millennials, we, 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 we get out of our minds, our westernized minds, and, look, and embrace the reality. Ute, now, we are in a poor country where we, um, where we need to do something really uh, to, to, to get by and to, to, to improve the state of this economy. You know, so I just hope, Ute, no matter anything that you're doing in your life, anything that you can do in your, in your space, whether you're a cleaner, you can bake. Uh, you can cook uh, anything that you can do in your in your in, in your in your space. I just hope Uti, yeah, that's what they see from my grind. With Nako I I broke out of uh, a great comfort zone. Yeah, but, uh, people in my in in my in in my um, in my from my community, they they're not um, really people who would sell bananas. So I had to break out of that uh, comfort zone to, um, to 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 get by also. To find out, to know, man, you need you need to start somewhere in your life, you know. So that's the inspiration that I hope um, uh, millennials are gonna see from my hustle and uh, embrace what you in a poor country. And we need to get by. We need to uh, do something to move things, to improve the economy, to improve improve the social economic state of our society, you know. So yeah, in any, any that I hope that's the impact. I hope my hustle is is bringing forth. Is I hope it's the light that is is bringing out uh, to to millennials. Thank you for your time, man, and, but mostly your inspiration, your motivation. Like, keep it up. I know there are young people who are watching who are really motivated, inspired by your work. Yeah, yeah. I'll push up, that. Thanks, Papa. Yeah. Thank you for watching. I think we're done here with Uriki Fresh Ngola. So I'll leave his link uh, to the socials, but I think you mentioned this in the conclusion. Uh, please, if you like this video, share it, comment, uh, maybe someone in your circles might be inspired by the incredible work done by Ulrich. So I'll catch you on the next one with love with Ubuntu from the city of Bulawayo, Joshua Ngomo Street and 8th Avenue. Till next time. Peace.